still praise you If you give me a miracle Yes, I'll praise you Though without a miracle I will still praise you morning i am sophie welcome to church in the book of ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 the bible says that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him in accordance to this scripture we are going to be saying prayers in line of revelation and knowledge this morning let us pray our father in heaven we thank you for bringing us into your presence thank you for loving us the way you do thank you father because your words your promises are yes and amen in our lives this morning we ask oh lord that you are going to bless us with revelation in jesus name we ask that you are going to open our eyes of understanding you're going to open our hearts to receive you're going to open our mind and our ears in the name of jesus father let us understand the calling where which you have called us unto let us walk in light of what of the great life that you have prepared for us in the name of jesus today we decree and we declare that there is no absence of life in us in jesus name we thank you father because darkness has no place around us in the name of jesus thank you father because we understand the hope that you have called us into and we start to walk and live in it in the name of jesus thank you because you have made us overcomers and therefore we have this understanding and we live the life of an overcomer on this earth in jesus name holy ghost thank you because this is your meeting this morning and thank you because you speak unto us and thank you because we hear your word and we have understanding and we go home today blessed in the name of jesus thank you for speaking to us through your servant and thank you because you always hear us when we call on you in jesus name we are afraid amen with assurance and confidence that god has heard us let us boldly take this confession of our faith i am making giant strides in every area of my life and i am progressively taking advantage of the immeasurable unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in me and at work for me hallelujah god's mighty power is here and now lifting me to higher realms of life and authority glory to god let us sit back and enjoy today's service hallelujah father we give you praise thank you so much for your faithfulness your loving kindness thank you for your wonderful people that you have gathered together from all over the world to hear the infallible word of god lord may your word this morning touch lives change lives impact lives transform lives in the name of jesus thank you almighty god may your word enters may your word enter our heart may your word enter our hearts oh god and form there a wall of defense against the lies and the onslaught of the enemy in the name of jesus may what we are going to hear today oh god build a wall of defense around our hearts around the core of our lives so that we may be able to withstand the lies of the enemy and we may come out victorious we may lay hold on the victory that Christ has already achieved for us. May your name alone, Father, be glorified in the name of Jesus. And may your people be edified. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. So today I'm going to continue the second part of the message that I uh, was preaching last week about the fact that uh, the confession that we make out of our mouths, confessing the word of God, actually activates the ministration of angels in our lives okay so last week i gave an example about somebody who has 
a wood father has a restaurant and you go to you went to the restaurant for example to go and get food and then you have these angels all around you they are like metro d or waiters right in in the restaurant they so they come they come to you where you are seated and they ask you to they give you a menu and ask you to fill in the menu or the order what you want so that they can take it into the kitchen give it to the chef the chef is going to make make it all up and then bring it back to you so that you can enjoy a wonderful meal and i said imagine the meal the wonderful meal that you are going to enjoy can be likened to all of the promises of God. Every promise that God has ever made in the Bible. The Bible says all the promises of God. They are yes and they are amen in Christ Jesus. So which means they are already yours in Christ. But you have to say amen to those promises. Before the promises can work for you. So liken the promise of God now to the meal. That you are meant to. That is meant to be cooked by the, by the chef right in the kitchen. And they prepare for you. So the chef in this instance will be jesus who is cooking all the meal for you you know and then he's giving it to the angels to come and deliver to you now but, but remember the meal the the meals and the resources to produce the meal are already available the 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 kitchen area or the what the the restaurant in which you find yourself is the kingdom of god right you are in the kingdom of god in the kingdom of god there are promises that god has made which have all been fulfilled in jesus so now god has positioned angels around your life that you can send them on errand you can say do this and do that and do that and they can take your orders take them to jesus and just prepare this thing and send it back to you but it's not preparing something new everything that has been prepared are things that by his blood he has already achieved for you but you lay hold on those things by declaring them by affirming them by but through the, the process of prayer you lay hold on them and then you begin to act like it's already true in your life now suppose you're asking for something that is in the covenant that's part of the promises of god but you don't have it at the moment or maybe for example somebody needs a part replacement or an organ replacement you know you know jesus christ in that same kitchen has got a pantry that they can go and manufacture something that doesn't exist and give to you do you understand what i'm saying an example to this what i've just shared now is in the story in the life of abraham right the bible said that abraham has passed the time of childbearing but Romans chapter 4 tells us that when it, when it was hopeless to hope, Abraham believed in hope. How did he believe in hope? He believed that God is able to do that which God has promised. And the Bible said that the God that called those things that be not as though they were, is the same one that told Abraham, don't call yourself Abraham anymore. Start to call yourself Abraham. So by Abraham now, changing his own, changing his name based on the instruction of God to Abraham, he set in motion <laughs> the law of faith basically began to call himself what god has called him even though in the natural he is not that yet at the, at the point in time when god changed his name he didn't have a child but shortly after he began to call himself abraham 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 you know the child of promise then came all right so that's what we've been speaking about for the past couple of weeks right so one of the things i mentioned last week was that angels respond to our words angels respond to our words we saw an example last week in the life of daniel in daniel chapter 10 verse 12 when the angels said to daniel fear not daniel for from the first day that you set your mind and heart to understand and to humble yourself before your god your words were heard your words were heard and have come as a consequence of and a response to your words i just wish a lot of us including myself we take this passage yeah, and just meditate on it and just believe it. Know fully well that the words you speak activates angels around you. See, this angel said to Daniel, I have come as a consequence of and in response to your words. I have come in consequence. The result of the reason why I came is because of your words. And I came to respond to your words. So, this tells us clearly that angels are activated by the words we speak. And I spoke last week as well that if you speak words that are contrary to the promises of God, the demons are there as well. They're going to respond to it. So don't we should not get to the point where we become flippant with our words and just say anything that we want to say. No. If you if negative words will have to come out of your mouth, then 
hold your mouth like this that's why the psalmist says to god and said put a watch over my mouth oh lord because hey let me not say things that will put me in bondage the bible actually tells us in the book of proverbs that by our words we are ensnared which means we are put in bondage by the words we speak you, you can also take the word ensnared to be to put in shape to put in the in a position in a, in a stiff position so surely you can set your life in order by the words that you speak whether for good or for bad the bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue those that love life or those that love death they will eat the fruit of it by what by the words they speak so it's what you speak that determine what you get in life praise god all right so today i want to continue the concluding part of the message which is a part two of what i preached last week that confessions activate the ministry of angels in your life so let's go into psalm 91 verse 9 to 13. the bible says because you have made the lord your refuge and the most high your dwelling place there shall no evil before you nor any plague or calamity come near your tent for that is for means because for he will give his angels as that is special charge over you to accompany and to defend and to preserve you in all your ways so here we see the command that god has given to angels are threefold here one to accompany you two to defend you three to preserve you in all your ways now look at the open bracket of obedience and service i'm going to come back to this in a moment okay verse 12 they shall bear you up on their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone you shall tread upon the lion and the other the young lion and serpent shall you trample underfoot so let's look in this text we see here the reason why no evil will befall you in verse 10 the Bible says that there shall no evil before you nor any plague or calamity come near you the reason for that is in the next verse there's a word there called for f-o-r because so the word for is um is a conjunction is a word that joins two sentences and essentially says there shall no evil before you nor any plague or calamity come near your tent that's it a promise of god that is a declaration of god for the reason why that will not happen is because god has already given his angels charge over you to accompany you to defend you to preserve you in all your ways so the point the point i want to make sure today to talk about today is as part of that uh, confessions activate the mystery of angels in your life is that angels are here for your what protection angels are here for your protection they are meant to accompany you to defend you and preserve you so you see here now imagine yourself going on a journey and you just envision angels accompany you and i've shared a story before of a minister of a missionary that got trapped in a village that was about to be killed and they were beating drums drums of death i think they were to take them to do sacrifice and it was in this tent and all of a sudden he just prayed just began to pray to god and all of a sudden the, the the drums stopped the door flung open and he walked out and when he walked out he found that the people that were beating the drums they wanted to come and capture him they cowered like this in in, in 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 trembling and were fearful they were shaking and he didn't know really what happened later uh he he, he got he escaped and he went away then later um he found somebody from that village and that, that he came to talk to him and he was asking the question what happened and he said when you came out of the of the um of the of the hut in which they placed you we saw mighty angels be, be surrounding you mighty fearful angels have we, we just got so afraid and that's why they bow down so you don't see these angels with your physical eyes but they are there they were placed there by god to accompany you to defend you to preserve you now you can see this promise of god the bible says all the promise of god they are yes and the amen in christ which means this has been fulfilled already new covenant this is already fulfilled right god has put angels to accompany you to defend you to, to preserve you okay now the question now is let's go to verse 9 he says yeah, because you have made the lord your refuge and your most high your dwelling place as i ponder on this thing you know when i was preparing this message the lord began to show me the pattern you notice here there's a difference between refuge and dwelling place refuge is a place you go to when you need protection dwelling place is a place where you live in the bible here says the lord is both where we live in the book the lord is both is also the one is both where we live in and where we go to god is the place where we live in he lives in us so we are his dwelling place and is our dwelling place vice versa we live in him he lives in us 
So that is our position. But it's also our refuge. It's the one that we run to, right? When we need protection. The Bible says that that um, uh, the righteous run to God and they are saved. The righteous run to God and they are saved. So which means we run to him and he protects us. Now, question is, how do I make the Lord my refuge? How do I run to him when I find myself in trouble? I have to believe that he is my refuge. And then I have to confess that is my refuge. I have to believe that God is my refuge and I have to confess with my mouth that he is my refuge. Believing God is my refuge means that creates an atmosphere in my heart that no matter what's going on in the world, I am protected. Confessing that is my refuge makes that a reality in my life. Always remember, the promises of God are voice activated. If there's a promise in the Bible and you don't learn to confess those promises over your life over and over and over again, they will not magically appear in your life. God has ordained it. The Bible says, out of the mouth of babes, you have ordained praise or you have ordained strength to avenge your enemy. That's what the Bible says in the book of Psalm, I think Psalm 82. Out of the mouth of babes, God has ordained strength, which means it is out of your mouth that God has ordained that his strength will be made manifest. So, if there's a promise of God that you want to see manifest in your life, you must learn to what? To activate that promise by speaking them out of that, that promise, by speaking such promise out of your mouth. The promises of God are voice activated. And faith always speaks. Praise God. Romans chapter 10 verse 10 says, For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So you believe in your heart. God declares you righteous. You believe what God has said. You believe that in your heart. That becomes a heart condition. But it is when you vocalize that which you have believed in your heart that it becomes salvation for you. It becomes experiential salvation for you. I hope that makes sense. So it is, And it's not talking about just being born again one time. It's talking about everything in the kingdom to work in your life. You must confess them to enjoy that as a benefit of salvation. Praise God. So, the guarantee that God will protect us or the guarantee that no evil rather will befall us as, as per Psalm 91 verse 10, the guarantee that no evil will befall us, that no plague shall come near our dwelling and no calamity shall come near our tent is because God has ordered, has ordered his angels to do what? To protect us. So you can have an assurance that you have angels all around you that are there for your protection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at Luke chapter 9, verse 12. I want to show you something that God shows, showed me. So, in Luke chapter 4, verse 9, verse 12, I want to call out a question. If in the previous verse we looked at, we saw that God has given angels order to accompany, to defend, and to preserve us, which is essentially an all-encompassing protection that God has given angels command. It is the God has commanded them. God has ordered them to protect us. The same way, if the analogy of the restaurant I gave before, where the maitre d' and the waiters have been ordered to serve you, okay, is it possible for angels now not to protect us? And the answer, we will find out before we get to the answer. I want to show you something that happened in the life of Jesus, and then you can use that as an example to see whether you can just do anything you like. In Luke chapter 4, verse 9 to 12, the Bible says, talking about this temptation of Jesus, Satan, then he led Jesus to Jerusalem. That's Satan now. Led Jesus Christ to Jerusalem and had him stand on the pinnacle. That's the highest point of the temple. And said mockingly to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written and forever remains written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard and protect you and they will lift you up on their hands so that you do not strike your foot against a stone. Now, you see, you think here that the devil is quoting scriptures. <laughs> and the devil does quote scriptures, but he quotes scriptures out of context. And it's very important to see that. I want to show you here how we must be careful not to quote the scriptures out of context. We must not quote scriptures to suit us. We must not quote scriptures and say, oh, because this is what I want to achieve, let me find a scripture that will support my idea. When in your heart you know that God does not approve of such behavior, the end of that doesn't doesn't usually end well. 
right so if you look here in verse 12 what did jesus christ do jesus christ said to him it is said in scripture you shall not tempt the lord your god to prove himself to you now there are some lessons here we might not be able to say a lot of things about it but i want to show you something that is important i want you to see how the devil misquoted this scripture if you go back to psalm 91 verse 11 because this is what the devil quoted psalm 91 verse 11 says for he will give his angels special charge right over you to accompany to defend to preserve you in all your ways now we look at the open bracket in this text of obedience and service which means the angels have a command to accompany defend and preserve you in your all your ways of obedience and service which means if you decide to be reckless with your life and you say oh the angels of god are going to protect me then you are tempting god you are doing what the devil wanted jesus christ to do the devil here told jesus go to the top of the of Jerusalem of the church in Jerusalem and throw yourself down from there. Now think about that carefully. Do you think that Jesus Christ cannot levitate? Or you know, we know he did that. We know when he ascended, he defied all the laws of gravity. He ascended. You all know that, right? When it was it was time for him to go back to heaven, he perhaps he lifted up his hands and he just got lifted up, right? So being lifted up or overcoming supernatural forces is not a big deal for Jesus. That is a no-brainer. I mean, if you could walk on water, can you walk on water? Possibly not, right? But he walked on water. So what is so essentially we know that he has power over the elements of nature. We know that he walked on water. We know he spoke to the the storm and the storm stopped. We know that he ascended on high. You know, uh, defined the laws of gravity, right? But in this instance here, something happened. The devil asked Jesus to be reckless with his life, to throw himself down. Go there and prove your power by being reckless. Prove your power by being reckless. That's essentially what he's saying. And now look at what he said to him. If you are the son of God, prove your sonship to God. Prove your sonship. Prove This is how you prove that you're son of God, by being reckless with your life. Is it not written? Is it not forever remain written that God has already said, I will protect you now. I've given you, I've given you angels. I've commanded angels to protect you. They will lift up, they, they, lift them, they, they will lift you up. They, they will lift you up on their hands so that you will not dash even your foot against the stone. It's not talking even about your body getting crushed on the on the ground. Even your, your foot, your tiny foot will not be crushed against a, a stone. So the devil will basically explain mind games here. He's saying, Look, go to the top of this place, jump off. Don't worry, angels are there to protect you. You can do whatever you like. And when you do this, by the way, this is how you prove that you're a son of God. I mean, how in the world does the will Jesus Christ need to prove himself to the devil? Do you see how stupid is that? Now, let me tell you something. You might say, oh, that's Jesus. How in the world do you need to prove yourself to the devil? Why would you need to be reckless with your life to prove that you're a child of God? So, for example, I'll give you an example. You are a man. You have a wife. But you enjoy going to sleep around. You just sleep around. You are um, promiscuous. You just sleep around and do nasty stuff. And then you say to yourself, grace has covered me. Grace has covered me. God is protecting me. God is protecting me. You are tempting God. Granted, God has given angels to protect you, but you are tempting God. You might end up doing what? Impregnating another woman, mess up your whole life. You might end up, you know, having catching um, sexually transmitted disease. All sorts of things can happen, right? So if the person then gets catches, let's say, some sort of STD, and I say, ah, is it God? God is God didn't protect me. No, you left God. You you walked away from a place where protection is. So, angels are there for protection. Is it possible for the angels to protect us? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. If you if you move away, if you move away from the presence of God, if you move away, remember, God has not left you. God will not leave you. But if you move away, let me show you a, a scripture that will help you. Jonah 2 8 says, They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Pay attention to that scripture. 
they that observe lie in vanity. What does it mean to observe? If you want to observe somebody, something, you have to ponder and check what they're doing and I like to speak to you. I, I work in IT industry and I have people called business analysts uh, that work for me. And one of the ways in which we collect requirement, what the customer wants us to do, one of the ways in which we collect requirement is through uh, running workshops or do interviews. But another way is observation. We will go and see, show me, how do they do this thing? So for example, let's say we want to get a requirement in 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 a uh, for a um for in a plant maybe where they're producing cars and we don't understand what they're saying how they are producing cars we couldn't understand the document we would have to send somebody there a business analyst there to say look go and observe what they're doing there so that you can use that to to document understand what they're doing and then you document that's the, what the word observe means to watch what somebody else is doing and let's tell you a story so that you can follow through with it the Bible is saying, they that observe lying vanities, forsake their own mercy. Excuse me, this lying vanity, another word for lying vanity here is the word idol, which means essentially you, you can make your own self your own idol when you are following yourself, you are priding yourself, you are saying, hey, anything can happen here. The Bible says, when you do that, you forsake your own mercy. You forsake, which will you walk away from the mercy of God. God never walks away. I hope you understand that. Okay, so angels cannot protect you if you are tempting God. We see that in the life of Jesus. So, if you go now and say, look, God is my protector, and you go to the top of um, uh, Mount Everest, and you jump, no protection or whatever, you know, the loss of gravity is going to bring you down. Simple. If God gave you an instruction to say jump, he gave you that instruction, right? If you say jump because he gave you the instruction, then he will protect you. But if you decide to make your own life to become reckless and just say, I can do anything I like, is okay. Then I'm saying you are tempting God. You are tempting God. So let us not be one of those who will tempt God to prove our sonship. Let us not be one of those people that say, oh man, I can do whatever I like. God is going to be there to, be there to protect me. No. Angels are there for your protection. But if you are tempting God, they cannot protect you. Notice that the devil subtly remove that of uh, uh, preserving you in all your ways of obedience and, and of service you know he removed that of obedience and service when he was quoting that back to jesus that is the way the devil misquote scripture and you know the other story that i want to quickly talk about i won't call i won't talk, go, ask you to go there but it's what genesis chapter 3 when the devil showed up to uh to eve in the garden what was what were the words that he said actually i'm going to go there genesis chapter 3 I believe it's in verse 2. The Bible says here in verse 1. Let's start from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Here, had God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You see that statement there? That's the man. Here, as God said, is a question engineered to put doubt in the mind of Eve. And the woman Eve accepted that, those words, to paint doubt in his in her mind to enable her to those what made her to doubt the goodness of god the integrity of god everything there went to pleasure you know when the devil comes into your life or you have those thoughts coming to you that so doubt in your heart to doubt the goodness of god the faithfulness of god when those words come to you the words are engineered to make you those words from the devil are engineered to make you to doubt god to throw all on uh, all discipline to do all caution to the wind as they say you know to just become reckless with your life those words are engineered to steal your faith in the parable of the sower the bible talks about about a particular um, um ground that received the seed sown and the seed sown here is the word of god the bible talks about a particular ground that received the seed sown and obviously that that ground that received the seed sown the seed could not grow to become fruit because the seed was choked by thorns and and um, and other things weeds that choked the word so as the word was trying to as the seed is trying to come out of the ground because the seed fell on the ground that has got thorns and 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 weeds in there as a plant the seed is trying to grow to become a fruit the the thorns and the weed choked the the, the seed from growing and just kind of explain the analogy to me that the seed is the word of God. The heart is the ground on which the, the seed fell. But he's talking about that 
the that offense came those thorns are like offenses or distractions of life they came for the sake of the word if i just i spoke about another ground that has no moisture in it the bible says because they are not deep in the word of god when offense came for the sake of the word the belief what you are believing god for an offense will come to take you away from your stability in jesus and then you start to speak like everybody else is speaking you start to act like everybody else is acting then you have forsaken the mercy of god god did not forsake you but you forsook you walked away as, as it were praise god i hope that is making sense essentially what i'm saying here is angels are here for your protection but please know that the devil comes with subtlety even you can use scriptures to confuse you and then you begin you begin to act reckless and say god is still there god is there god never left but you walked away from the promise all right okay second point i want to make is angels enforce your covenant right angels enforce your covenant right let's go to psalm 103 from verses 19 to 21 so here the bible says the lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all bless affectionately gratefully praised the lord you his angels you mighty ones who do his commandments according to the voice of his word bless affectionately gratefully praise the lord all you who all you his hosts you his ministers who do his pleasure the bible here essentially is saying is the first thing i want to call out from this text is number one god's kingdom rules over all god's kingdom rules over all other kingdoms god's kingdom rules over all now you belong to that kingdom that rules over all that kingdom that rules over all is in your heart the bible says when jesus christ says to, to those people when they were asking him master tell us when the kingdom of god will come and he says to them the kingdom of god is not here or there the kingdom is is within you the kingdom is already within you so essentially saying the kingdom of god is of the heart is already in the heart the kingdom of god is not a location it's not a physical location that you be, you, you go to it's a realm it's a realm and in that realm that realm is in your heart the kingdom of god is in your heart okay that's what jesus christ was saying to them so you belong to that kingdom of god that is already in your heart right that kingdom of god rules over all okay so if you belong in the kingdom of god and i know you belong in the kingdom of god because you give your life to jesus your life to jesus it means you belong to a kingdom that rules over all which means this kingdom that rules over all has a way that you must understand how it operates so that the kingdom that rules over all can actually rule over all other kingdoms that may want to operate in your life a kingdom is the domain of a king a kingdom is the domain of the of a king the earthly kingdoms are domains of kings of the earth the kingdom of god is a domain of god's kingdom or in the domain of god as the king of the universe so everything in the universe is encapsulated in the kingdom of god god rules over all and you belong to the kingdom that rules over all okay so which means if you are of the kingdom of god you have you have rulership over all which means god has made you a little god that can rule over every circumstance of life if there are other kingdoms either the kingdom of finances the kingdom of health the kingdom of education the kingdom of social enterprise if there are any different kingdom a domain that wants to rule over your life you have the authority because you are in the kingdom that rules over all to rule over such kingdoms now i want to show you how to rule over on all kingdoms since you are already in the kingdom of god okay the way to do that is through the words that you speak why book of ecclesiastes i believe it's about chapter 8 says that a king rules by commands and who may say to the king what are you saying there a king rules by command a king rules by command who may say to the king what are you doing there so yeah, if you are a king because you belong to the king of kings 
and you are a god because you belong to the god of gods because you are the gods you are the kings right that god rules over god of gods king of kings right if you are a god if you're a king how should you rule you rule by commands and when you rule by command nobody may say to you what are you saying there the only way for your words not to work is if you begin to doubt yourself as a king i've given this analogy before and i said if you are a king and you, the, you're wearing all this rega regalia you have this crown on your head and the, and the staff in your hand and you can command people to do anything and they will go and do it but you constantly second guesses yourself you don't have bonus to say this is what we're gonna do that's what we're gonna do you don't have the bonus to say that the citizens of that country are looking up to you to issue your command but you clam short because you clam short you are a king by title but you are not working in the authority that that office demands it's like again that guy that went into the restaurant of his father that is meant to order the maturity and the waiters to bring him food but he clammed up he kept quiet then the waiters don't know what to serve and the person is there in the kitchen uh, in the restaurant with the kitchen could with the kitchen fully stacked with food of all kinds that will satisfy his belly but the person is sat down there and is almost dying of hunger because the person does not know that it is through the spoken words that commands are released and resources are brought to you i'll say that again it is through the spoken word i mean my my i'll ask my um my it people to embolden these words actually it is through the spoken words that resources are brought to you it is through the spoken words that resources are brought to you which means when you speak the word out of your mind as a king without doubting in your heart what will happen those words you have spoken will not return to you void but those words you have spoken will prosper in that which you have sent it and those words we have spoken will bring back to you what you have spoken jesus christ says in john chapter 6 verse 3 he says the words that i speak they are life and they are spirit the words that i speak they are life and their spirit which means the words of jesus the word of god the words that we have commanded and issued out of our mouth they are spiritual life they go and bring the life that we have spoken in book of isaiah chapter 55 i believe verse 11 the bible says so shall my words be that have gone out of my mouth they will not return to me void but they will prosper in that which have sent them which means the words that have gone out of your out, out of your mouth will go and prosper and prosper in that which you have sent it will not return empty the words you've spoken will not return empty but those words will go and prosper in that which you have said so now if you believe that you are a god if you believe that you are a king and you know that kings rule by decrees and and gods rules by decrees then what are you going to say you have to enforce the kingdom of god that rules over all by speaking like god will speak in every situation you got sickness in your body what are you going to say i am healed i'm divinely healed i have divine life operating my life eternal life is at work in my organs i am blessed with div div divine health in the name of jesus christ you need money in your bank account you begin to say lines are falling to me in pleasant places in the name of jesus blessings are crowded around me in the name of jesus christ rain rain of blessing falling upon me in the name of jesus christ the lord supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by christ jesus now when you begin to say those words those words go out now outside you know they go out outside of you and they go into the atmosphere and begin to orchestrate situations to bring things to pass but who carries these words you've spoken angels angels enforce your covenant rights remember this thing we're speaking about they are your rights already because the bible is all of the promises of god they are yes which means they are yes in christ jesus to which we say amen to it we have to say amen to the promises you don't say amen to the promises the promises don't show up in your life the promises have been fulfilling jesus and you are in jesus so the promises have been fulfilling your life already but to manifest in your life you have to say amen to it how do you say amen do you say amen grunting do you say amen with your mouth shut no you say amen so be it you affirm you agree with what you have said so that is how you make it to work the promises of god their voice activated 
for the promise to work in your life you must open your mouth and declare it to be so but you must declare it as a king would declare you must declare it as a god would declare how that makes sense you must declare without second guessing yourself without thinking oh is anybody going to hear is anybody going to hear am i going to do it no that voice of doubt is the enemy trying to circumvent um shall change you from your blessing what happened to eve in genesis chapter 3 genesis chapter 3 verse 1 when the devil says did god really say you should not eat of that that is the voice of doubt anytime the voice of doubt is trying to crowd in when you are trying to make an affirmation no it is the devil trying to steal something from you and what do you do you say no in the name of jesus christ and say what you've got to say listen what do you have to lose what do you have to lose if it doesn't work you don't have to lose anything it cannot get worse than it is already anyway so if it doesn't work what do you have to lose nothing so say what you have to say say it with faith say it believing that what 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 you have said god has said that the words you have spoken will not return to you void but those words will prosper in that which you have said said sent it so you need to carry a consciousness of what of a more than a conqueror a more than conqueror mindset christ is a conqueror and he has made us to be more than himself and because he said greater work than this you shall do john chapter 14 see greater work than i have done you shall do so christ is the conqueror i think greater work than the conqueror has done will you do so which means you are the more than conqueror christ is the conqueror but you are the more than conqueror that will do more than what christ has done and he made it so he gave you his glory he made it so that you will do more than what he has done on the earth are you ready to do more than what christ has done are you ready to impact lives through the power of the holy ghost are you ready to change life to touch lives are you ready to manifest the glory of god on the earth then learn to begin to send your angels on errand learn to begin to activate the ministry of angels in your life by speaking only what god will say learn to put your mouth to use to work for you praise god forevermore so number two second thing we get from psalm 103 verse 19 to 21 is in verse 20 the bible says the angels they do the commandment of the law they hearken to the voice of his word look at that text again the angels who do his commandment they act on the commandment of god what's the commandment of god here angels are there to serve you they hearken to the voice of his word they hearken they listen to the voice of the word of god which means if you are speaking the word of god out of your mouth what are the angels going to do they will hearken to the voice of the word of god you have spoken and what they would they do they will do that which you have said you see, do you see the correlation let's look at it again angels do the word of god how do they do that they do that by hearkening to the voice of the word of god so they are constantly listening to hear the voice of the word of God. <laughs> the word of God has a voice. Ah, Father, help me. The word of God has a voice in the spirit. How do I know that? Well, simple. In the beginning, when God spoke to the earth, I said, Earth, bring up what? Herbs. The word of God has a voice because the, it was the voice of the word of God that the earth heard. And the earth responded by bringing up vegetation from the ground. It was the voice of the word of God that the ocean, the sea heard, the seas heard, and brought out fish and all the animals in abundance. The word of God has a voice. And that voice will be hearkened to by the angels. And the angels will do what the word of God has said. The same way in the book of first kings i think when god told elijah and god commanded the raven to feed elijah you think about that the raven hears the voice of the word of god and the ravens went to where elijah was and they fed him until the until, until the, the river dried up so if a raven can hear the voice of the word of god and the earth can hear the voice of the word of god and uh, the seas can hear the voice of the word of God. Why do you think angels will not hear the voice of the word of God? Everything in the universe actually hears the voice of the word of God because the word of God has a voice. So the Bible says the angels do the commandment of the Lord. How? 
because they heard the voice of the word of God. So when you begin to vocalize the word of God from your mouth, it becomes a voice in the spirit that the angels will hear and they will now go and perform them for you. I hope that makes sense to you now. Praise God. All right. So now this is very interesting because what then that does is this. Angels cannot read your mind. They only respond to the spoken word. Angels cannot read your mind. They only respond to the spoken word. The devil is an angel. He's a fallen angel. He cannot read your mind. I think, I believe I said that last week. He, 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 he can only respond to the words you've spoken. But what word would the devil respond to? Negative words. The words that are likened to his kind. The words that vibrate are the same vibration of the devil. Negative words, negative vibes operate at the vibration of the devil. So he will hear those words and he will go and act on them. This is the reason why you must learn to only say what God says in every situation. Praise God. Health, protection, financial prosperity, every covenant right belongs to you. And God has given your angels charge over over enforcing those rights in your life angels are here for a purpose they are here to establish god's covenant in our lives but how do we release them to work on our behalf with our words with our words so when you have a need in prayer when you have a need in your life speak words that line up with the word of god for that need and start expecting your angels to be active in helping helping you to bring it to pass hallelujah now i want to share with you a short story as i begin to round up that will but further buttress the power of the spoken words to activate the ministry of angels in your life check out this story this story i read on the on, on the kenneth copeland website it's an article that was just that describes something uh, in their church i believe our team will put it up now so there was a man who had a heart condition and he had been walking in faith with the Lord to receive healing as promised by God's covenant. One night he woke up and there was an angel standing over him with his hands in his chest, walking on his heart. He looked at him and the angel said, everything is all right. Go ahead, go ahead and go back to sleep. And the man woke up the next day with a new heart. My prayer for you that you will have this kind of testimony in your life where God comes through for you when everybody around you seems to say it's not possible I pray for somebody today I pray for you today that the Lord himself will come through for you in ways that you have not even expected in the name of Jesus you have believed for a long time you have believed for a long time. But I pray for you. I join my faith with yours. That the season of change in your life is here now. In the name of Jesus. That the Lord will manifest breakthrough for you in Jesus name. That there will be a miraculous encounter for you in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will surprise you in the name of Jesus. That before the end of this year. You will have angelic encounter. You may not see them physically, but they will have. They will. They will be. They will actively be working on your behalf to bring to reality that which you believe God for. In the name of Jesus, praise God. So, as I said last week, don't go looking for an angel, because Satan will be happy to oblige you by manifesting himself as an angel of light to mess with you. You can expect your angel to work for you and work with you. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7 and verse 9, and verse 7 and verse 14, I believe, I was spoke here last week, that angels are given to us to minister for our needs. Whether you know it or not, your angel is waiting for you to speak the word of God out of your mouth so that he has something to work with so that he can go and bring the answers for you. Don't send your angels away or don't incapacitate them by speaking negative words or words that contradict the word of God. If you speak words of failure, words of lack, words of faithlessness, words riddled with fear, words riddled with worry and anxiety, 
the angel of God cannot bring that for you because such things you have requested cannot be found in heaven. There's no worry, sickness or financial problem or lack or anxiety or panic attack in heaven. There's nothing like that in heaven. So in the storehouse of heaven, we don't have it because we don't have it. When you keep speaking the words of the doctor and keep speaking all these things that things are going to be hard, things are bad, and you allow your heart to focus on them, the angels of God cannot do anything for you in that space because we don't have them in our storehouse in heaven. But in the store, in the store of the devil, the devil has some of the yes, these things in the store. And when you when you keep speaking those things, you keep seeing them more in your life because you are you are by ignorance sent demons on errand to go and bring those things into your life. So I hope this has been a blessing to you, right? Just, just remember. You are in the kingdom of God. That kingdom rules over all. And that kingdom, the way we operate in that kingdom, we release things to work by the spoken word. We start to we start with our words first. In the in the in the next next um next week, I'm going to talk about how to affirm right the best way to do affirmation to get results. All right, and then the week after that, when we get into December, I'll start talking about acting. How to act the word out so that you can get a result. Remember, in order to manifest your future, there are four things. Believe that God wants you to prosper. Say what God says. In your heart, let your imagination be filled, filled with what God has done. The imagination of what you want to see. Then begin to act like God. So for the many, for many um uh, weeks now, I think we've been talking about confession, the word of the heart, and all that. So, I'm going to be running up the the, 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 the the year by start talking about acting, you know. So, I'm one of the ways in which you can act is learning to set goals, learning to follow through with your goals, all right. Set goals and to, 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 to set with your goals. And one of your goals in this coming year might be to spend time with God, to know this word, to make this word work for you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. I want you to just for a moment just think about. What we have learned so far about angels being on her hand. And there will be something that you believe God for, personally that you want God to do for you. Ponder that thing right now. Ponder that thing right now. Now I want you to step into your heart and see that that thing has already been achieved. What will it look like if that which you believe God for is already done? How will your life feel like? How will your heart feel like? How will your emotions be like if that which you have believed God for suddenly tomorrow is a reality? In your heart, how does it feel? How does it feel? Now, remember, Mark 11, 22 to 24, makes us to understand, when we pray, we should believe we have received. When do we believe we have received? When we pray, not after we pray. When we pray, we believe we have received. Then we are going to have it. So right now, based on the way you feel, based on what you have seen in your heart of God, God is doing this. Begin to say, Father, I thank you that you have given me the answers to my prayers. I receive this answer by faith in the name of Jesus. Angels of God, now go and bring the manifestation in the physical in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you just made an order. You place an order with the storehouse of heaven. And when you place an order, what do you do? You wait and expect for you to show up in your life. And that is what you're going to get in the name of Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you are doing in our lives. Thank you, Almighty God, that your children have learned lessons upon lessons. Lord, help us to be doers of the word. Help us to be doers of the word. Help us to live here, oh God, and be put these things to work. Put angels to work on our behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. And help us not to doubt ourselves because we are already in the kingdom that rules over all. Thank you, wonderful Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. All right, thank you so much for being part of service. Um, please, in the coming uh, in the coming weeks, we're gonna have um, a Christmas get together. Uh, this year is not is not gonna be physical; it's gonna be online. So the team is putting something together. So I'll be sharing that with you in the coming weeks. Uh, but just want to let you know, it's gonna happen sometime. I think second second Wednesday um, of second Wednesday of of the of December. I think that's when when we're planning to do it. Uh, so we're going to use the metamorphosis slot for that same thing so that we can, you know, how long together. I think it's going to be fun. All right. God bless you. And I'll speak to you another time.
Thank you for worshiping with us. We hope you enjoyed the sermon. We were blessed to have you. We hope to see you again on Wednesday for midweek service at 6 p.m. UK time, morning prayers every Saturday at 6 a.m. UK time, and Sunday service at 8 a.m. UK time. The replay for today's service will premiere on YouTube at 10 a.m. UK time. For love offering, kindly use the bank details on your screen or you can scan the QR code on your screen to give via PayPal. We invite you to join our monthly Practicality of Grace series every first Wednesday of the month. The series features discussions with guests who take your questions and show you how to practically apply God's grace in different areas of your life. You can send your anonymous questions to the live chat on the website at www.thelighthouse.org That is www.thelighthouse.org Or you can send an email to light at thelighthouse.org Would you like us to pray with you? Kindly click the link that pops up in the live chat and fill the form or you can visit our website at www.thelighthouse.org and fill the request form. You can now book a counseling or prayer session with Pastor Davis on Calendly. Visit the link on the website or in the description box and follow the instructions to book a session. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok on the username that is displayed on the screen. Don't forget to comment, like, and share our messages. Until next time, remain in your identity in Christ Jesus.
indescribable, unstoppable, immeasurable. Nothing can compare to you because you are God. God all by yourself. Nothing added, nothing missing. You are everything encompassing. And that's why I will praise you. Oh.